from the city that never sleeps. 17 miles from Madison Square Garden, New York City. It's America at Night with Rich Valdez, America's favorite late night talk program, featuring interesting guests from around the world and calls from across America. And now, here is your host, Rich Valdez. Hi there, good evening, and what's up, America? I am Rich Valdez, Valdez with an S, at Rich Valdez on all of the social media. Welcome to the Monday night, nope, not Monday, Tuesday night edition of the program. Happy to be here. We're live, we're national, and the phone number, 833-482-5337, 833-4VALDEZ, if you want to join us on our late night national town hall conversation and so much is going on. Happy Constitution Day to everybody. The United States Constitution is celebrated today, September 17th. Shout out to the Constitution. Shout out to we the people. And maybe we'll get into that a little bit more um, down the road in the show. But right now, I want to focus on a couple of things because Puff Daddy Sean Combs, also known as Diddy, the rap mogul, was uh, indicted today. He was arrested yesterday, and we weren't sure what the charges were today. Uh, United States Attorney um, Damien, what's his last name? Damien Williams. Damien Williams uh, for the Southern District of New York uh, announced the indictment. I've got a clip of that, and it's it's a little on the longer side, more than a minute, but uh, I think there's a good amount of meat in there, and I want you to hear it. Check this out. Today I'm announcing the unsealing of a three-count indictment charging Sean Combs with racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking, interstate transportation for prostitution, The indictment alleges that between at least 2008 and the present, Combs abused, threatened, and coerced victims to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. As alleged in the indictment, to carry out this conduct, Sean Combs led and participated in a racketeering conspiracy that used the business empire he controlled to carry out criminal activity, including sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and the obstruction of justice. Let me say a little bit more about the charges. The indictment alleges that Combs abused and exploited women and other people for years and in a variety of ways. As alleged, Combs used force, threats of force, and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended sexual performances with male commercial sex workers some of whom he transported or caused to be transported over state lines. Combs allegedly planned and controlled the sex performances, which he called freak-offs, and he often electronically recorded them. The freak-offs sometimes lasted days at a time, involved multiple commercial sex workers, and often involved a variety of narcotics, such as ketamine, ecstasy, and GHB which Combs distributed to the victim to keep them obedient and compliant. As alleged, when Combs didn't get his way, he was violent, and he subjected victims to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse so that they would participate in the freak-offs, and that Combs hit, kicked, threw objects at, and dragged victims, at times by their hair. Wow. Now, we've seen the video of that, right? At least in one instance, we saw his ex-girlfriend, Cassie, was it Cassie Garcia, I think is her name is, and uh, he drags her down the hallway, kicks her, he beats the tar out of this girl. And uh, it's a horrible video to watch. Now, listen, I, um, I'm, I'm always going to stand by what we all should stand by, right? The people are innocent until proven guilty. I, for years, have heard these rumors about Sean Combs uh, and these freak-off, crazy, orgy-type parties and all sorts of craziness. You never know what to believe. I'm talking about for years, like, since I was a teenager, I was hearing this stuff. And I don't know if there's any truth to it. You never know, right? You hear things about things all the time. I mean, I also used to hear rumors about a guy named Jeffrey Epstein and having an island where he had underage girls and whatnot. And um, and this plane called the Lolita Express. And lo and behold, some years later on that, uh, that came to fruition. Now he's gone. And guess what? They're they're in the same place, I think, uh, where Epstein died. I laugh because it's just, it's just you know, not funny, but funny. You know what I mean? Funny like, hmm, not funny, haha. They're holding Diddy without bail, by the way. He was denied bail a couple hours ago. They're holding him in the same facility as they held Jeffrey Epstein, which I thought was interesting. And 
he is, um, again, being held on sex trafficking and racketeering charges. Uh, they're saying he was the criminal mastermind of this whole thing. And uh, just the whole thing, very, very interesting situation. Um, wouldn't surprise me if he was guilty. Uh, I, I am actually surprised that he's getting caught, but not so much, right? Because why? We just had a big news event where the Secret Service is now coming clean, saying they had not searched the Trump golf course prior to him going out there, prior to the second assassination attempt. And what better way to get folks in the media to not scrutinize the Secret Service, to not talk about Trump, to not garner goodwill for him, for people to say, oh, my gosh, pobrecito, you know, they're trying to kill this guy, poor guy. And this this is going to help Trump. So obviously, let's throw out a big story. Let's let's make sure this indictment for Diddy anything. Give me something that'll be a national headline. And uh, you know, if I were a Democrat, what I would do is I'd say sex trafficking. Perfect. Conservatives love to talk about that stuff. Put it in there. If if you could connect it somehow to that Venezuelan gang, you know, do anything you can where they can take all eyes off of Trump and put it on something else. Because that's how the media works. I mean, they, they orchestrate absolutely everything with the government. In my opinion, it's all one big cabal. And it, it is and it isn't, right? I mean, they're not always going to work in concert with one another, hand in glove. But they've done it enough times for me to realize that they can do it when they want to. And, and that's exactly where we're at. So Diddy was denied bail. Again, and he pled not guilty to sex trafficking crimes. Uh, all of them, it seems. Uh, the judge denied his request for bail. After he pled not guilty, he's appeared in front of a magistrate judge, Robin Tarnofsky, in Manhattan today and was charged with racketeering, conspiracy, sex trafficking by force, fraud or coercion, transportation to engage in prostitution. And if he's found guilty, he faces a minimum of 15 years behind bars or a maximum sentence, check this out, of life in prison. Wow. I didn't know that you could get 15 years for li uh, life in prison for um, trafficking prostitutes or whatever these charges amount to. That's heavy duty. Uh, the judge decided there were no conditions she could impose on Diddy. Uh, Tarnofsky pointed out sex trafficking is a crime that happens behind closed doors and the rapper would be hard to monitor even with pretrial monitoring services. The judge considered alternatives to detainment but found that they were not sufficient. Tarnofsky con uh, conceded the, the height, uh, excuse me, the weight of the uh, evidence against Combs and said that this is what it is. It's significant evidence. Wow. Diddy's legal team plans to appeal the bill decision. Mr. Combs is a fighter. He's going to fight this to the end. Diddy's lawyer said outside the courthouse, he's innocent. He came to New York to establish his innocent. He's not afraid. He's not afraid of the charges. There's nothing that the government said in their presentation today that changes anyone's mind about anything. He's been looking forward to this day. He's been looking forward to clearing his name, and he's going to clear his name. And we're going to stand by his side as he does it. We believe him wholeheartedly. He did not do these things. That was, again, Diddy's lawyer, who in this article from Fox News is unnamed. Um, let's continue. The U.S. District Attorney's Office requested that the judge deny Diddy's bail ahead of his uh, Tuesday arraignment, characterizing the I'll Be Missing You singer as a potential flight risk. And, you know, they shouldn't call him the I'll Be Missing You singer because I think that's Originally Rod Stewart's song, right? He just did a remake of it. But anyway, the attorney, um, the U.S. Attorney's Office worried that Diddy would be possibly uh, obstructing justice or threatening witnesses. That's what they said Trump would do. And he didn't do any of that. Uh, the government pointed to his alleged decades long history of violence and his pattern of abuse. The attorney's office, uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office indicated that no bail conditions could address these possible issues. <clears throat> so Diddy got a no bail deal. Meanwhile, if he would have robbed a bodega, he'd be out on the street right in an hour with a uh, desk appearance ticket or what many call a disappearance ticket. Now, I want to be clear about two things. And this is, again, a quote from Damien Williams saying uh, this office is determined to investigate and prosecute anyone who engages in sex trafficking, no matter how powerful or wealthy or famous you may be. And. There should be no doubt about our commitment to that. So we're going to get into this uh, whole uh, Diddy trafficking thing and get uh, some opinions from a uh, former FBI agent, retired FBI agent. And uh, I also want to get some opinions on 
the latest, right? The fact that the Secret Service didn't do a full sweep of the golf course and left gaps in their perimeter. And it, it just, again, I'm a layman and I'm just looking at the information being pre presented. And I think if you can get a dude with an AK-47 in the tree line for 12 hours and can do a stakeout, it sounds like it's not very secure. Call me crazy. What do I know, right? But that's what we, we've got there. And, and, and there's a lot more to discuss as well. So uh, I want to bring in our guest momentarily when we get him. And we're going to take a quick pause right here. Plus, wait, media censorship. Wait till you hear this. Our guest was on one of the major media platforms today, uh, mainstream uh, cable news, and said something that the host didn't like. And guess what they did? The guy said, the interview's over. You got to go take care, brush your hair, bye-bye. And, and he dismissed him. And I thought to myself, Man, that guy never had a career in radio, right? He must have been a TV guy his whole life because in radio, you live for moments like that where you go back and forth with people. And, you, you know, this is the crux of a good interview. And I, I just I was, you know, I was really kind of taken aback when I heard this. We'll play you a clip of that when we come back, uh, as well as uh, some updates on this Diddy stuff and everything else. Don't go anywhere. Rich Valdez coming back with Jonathan Gillum. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. The best guests, the best opinions. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. They also seized evidence of the freak-offs. Electronic devices that contain images and videos of the freak-offs with multiple victims. And they seized cases and cases of the kinds of personal lubricant and baby oil that Combs' staff allegedly used to stock hotel rooms for the freak-offs. More than 1,000 bottles altogether. All right, America, welcome back. Rich Valdez with you live till 1 a.m. Eastern time. And again, that was uh, Damian Williams, the United States attorney for the Southern District of New York, reading his indictment against Sean P. Diddy Combs about uh, alleged freak offs where these were these uh, big sex parties that involved drugs, prostitutes that were transported across state lines, uh, all sorts of blackmail, sex trafficking, et cetera. And. Uh, Sean Diddy Combs again held with no bail. He won't. Uh, they're not giving him any bail. He's being held at the I think the MCC in uh, in Manhattan. And I want to get to our guest. Our guest is a former FBI agent, former Navy SEAL, Jonathan Gilliam. Uh, he's been with us uh, a couple of times before, and he's always a, a champ on these issues. He really is terrific. Jonathan Gilliam, welcome back, sir. Hey, it's good to be with you, Rich. And listen, by the way, I just realized. As I was sitting there with your intro music, I felt like I was in a Geico commercial almost. That music is very similar to the old caveman commercials. <laughs> I love those commercials. <laughs> Thank you, but brother. But yeah, it's good to be with you, my friend. Amen to that, man. Same here. So um, you uh, being a former FBI guy, I wanted to get your take on this because obviously uh, – we look at this and, and people, you know, people are going to be on both sides of the issue. Like, oh, man, I'm a fan of Diddy's or, oh, man, I knew this guy was guilty. He's a creep. And uh, I, I don't know where I fall on it, but I do know this. The allegations seem very, very serious. What's your thought? Have you done cases like this, sex trafficking cases during your career? And how do you weigh in on this? Uh, actually, I, yes, I have done cases like this. And um, for uh, just so get people up to speed on the kind of if they prosecute for all the all the different crimes that they're charging with, um, I'll just put it this way: each each time they took a prostitute or a sex worker, whatever they want to call them these days, across state lines. Every time that one individual went across state lines, that's one count of man act. So, uh, so however long this was going on, however many people he took across state lines that were sex workers, that is up to 20 years in jail per, per each person? one per, wow. per man act. It's, it, and, and so I usually don't get that much, but, um, actually let me go back on that. I think it's 10 years, but if they take them there and then take them back each time over the state line is a right, count trip. of man act. Right. So that's 20, that would be uh, 20 years. So, um, you know, it's most likely if they charge him with, 
everything they got him on, he he'll spend the rest of his life in jail unless he cuts a deal um, with somebody and there's a bigger fish here or there's more people to, to bring in. Um, perhaps he could get less, but you have to understand in the federal world, there is no parole. You serve your time, whatever you get, that's what you serve. Mm. Wow. So, um, any chance, and again, I'm just speculating here for the sake of entertainment. Uh, if he says, yeah, yeah, you know what? Uh, I, I was in this thing with a guy named Jeffrey Epstein. Go after him. Oh, shoot, you can't. He's dead. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm the top of the food chain. I can't really rat anybody out. He's got to do all his time. Well, I mean, it, does, it doesn't matter. It's like uh, when you commit murder, if, uh, if you're driving or you rob a bank, if you drive the getaway car and you didn't actually go in and rob the bank, you're still getting the same charge as the guy that went in and actually robbed the bank. So uh, the fact that they um, are charging with conspiracy, that's, that's the thing. So there's got to be more than just him involved, and there's got to be more than one crime involved, right? So, so we know there's going to be more than, than just, uh, just uh, di- uh, whatever you want to call him these days, B. Diddy, yeah. whatever you want to pop, right, whatever. Diddy, yeah. um, so there's going to be more than than just him involved because uh, when they use the words conspiracy and the fact that there were all these multitude of crimes, um, then that is another enhancer of the penalties. So it's I mean it is not looking good for him and and I would just advise people I think this is a good lesson for the general public. It doesn't matter if it's a celebrity or a politician or um, you know your best friend if. If they live a life that uh, you're not you're not aware of, and there's things going on like this to this extent, um, it, it's best to steer clear of those people. And then you have to realize that y- you may not know them. Like you may say, "Oh, he's such a great uh, musician. I love his work." Right. And he helped to get all these people off, you know, off the ground level and have careers. Um, you got to remember, you don't know these people. You don't know politicians. You don't know celebrities you don't know musicians unless you know them you don't know them and this is a good example of why you have to be very careful on who you pick as your heroes yeah no good point and a lot of people were really let down with r kelly when he was uh caught in a similar type of scandal i think at a lesser scale uh but when it came out that all these artists that he'd helped to come up he was you know kind of sexually abusing them in order that was his payment that was the fee <laughs> i'll, I'll right, put you on right. a record as long as you do whatever in some cases it was the parents bringing minor children it was absolutely insane folks we're on with jonathan gilliam he is a former navy seal former fbi agent and jonathan gilliam i don't want you to let the cat out of the bag because we're about to hit the break and come back and i want to spend some time on this but you were on a cable news uh channel one of the biggest ones out there say the biggest one out there uh fox business channel uh, in terms of business news and uh, having a political discussion or some uh, security analysis on this Trump assassination case, and you shared your your observations on something. It was not shared by the host of the program, and you got dissed and dismissed. They sent you pack and turned your mic off, and I, I've never heard of such a thing on television. Uh, so I want to get your take on that. We're going to have a clip of that as well. Don't go anywhere, folks. We're coming right back with Jonathan Gilliam. He is the... Uh, uh, former Navy SEAL, former FBI, and the host of the Experts Podcast, uh, author of Sheep No More, and are you coming right back? Don't go anywhere. I'm Rich Valdez. but I have a lot of people that listen and they love your show and I appreciate it very much. America at Night with Rich Valdez. All right, amigos, welcome back. Rich Valdez continuing with you till 1 a.m. Eastern time. Our phone number is 833-482-5337, 833-4-VALDEZ. And our guest, Jonathan Gillum, and he is a uh, retired Navy SEAL, retired FBI agent, author of the book Sheep No More, and he was given some of his expert opinion on the on the Trump assassination, the uh, security failure by the Secret Service, and made a, a provocative statement, 
And what I remember hearing was that the Democrats want Trump dead. Now, you might recall, I played a tape of that last night, right? I played a tape of a bunch of Democrats saying there. One of them even, I guess we could say he was a Republican, the head of the Lincoln Project. He says, we have to put a bullet in this guy's head, right? He literally said that. So it's not like uh, that could be misunderstood any other way. They've said all sorts of things. We have to eliminate him. We have to get rid of this guy. He must be stopped. He's a clear and present danger. He's a threat to democracy. You name it, they've put it out there so that these crackerjack, looney tune, crazy people uh, can go ahead and do what they do. I don't know if they do it for that purpose, but it's clear to me that they don't care if something like that happens because they're not taking that into consideration. I've never heard Trump say those things, right? But anyway, uh, I want you to hear what Jonathan Gillum said on the uh, Fox Business Channel with a host who's uh, a gentleman, uh, typically, uh, always has a fantastic uh, show, Stuart Varney. Listen to this. The Democrat Party, regardless of the rhetoric that they want, they want Trump dead. I don't know. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm sorry, Jonathan. Uh, I don't think you can say that legitimately. Uh, I think we can I, I say it legitimately. Say. But I can think we can say that legitimately based on the verbiage that they use, and then they cover up. To say that they want him eliminated, to okay. say that they, they want him gone, these are words that push people forward, and then you have directors of agencies like this that come on, and they do not do the job, the simple job of perimeter security well, over and over okay, and over look, again. Jonathan, I'm sorry, I'm going to end it right there. I'm not going to take any conspiracy theories on this show. Jonathan, That's Gillen, not a conspiracy uh, yes, theory. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I'm not having it. Listen, Jonathan, I'm an investigator. Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it, Jonathan. Thank you very much. <laughs> he was polite. <laughs> Jonathan Gillen, welcome back. I'm not going to do that to you, by the way. Uh, you can say whatever you want. We're, we're allowed to disagree here. And, and that's not a shot at him. That's just, uh, I just, I think it's, it's an interesting place to land, right? That uh, I don't agree with you. Uh, how is it a conspiracy theory? Talk to me, brother. Well, first of all, the, the entire interview, when the interview started, right, before we even started the interview, they had a reporter on there who did an entire segment talking about how all of these uh, politicians have been blaming Trump for these uh, bomb threats against schools in Ohio because he said the stuff that he said about cats and dogs when they, they've already found out that the, all that stuff was coming from overseas. It had nothing to do with Trump. They were just doing it from overseas uh, to get people riled up. So th the things that they were saying in this interview that they were allowing to be said – was hearsay, was they were saying that he was a national security threat. They showed Clinton there saying that he could not, that we sh should get rid of him. And, and they'd allow those things to occur. So then we go into the interview, uh, Stewart, who I actually like, and I, I, I put on X posted before uh, I even went on there. I said, I was so excited to be on there because I love being on his show. I love being on with him. Um, and uh, generally, Usually, uh, we have such a great discussion about things. Right. And so he starts asking me some really good questions about what's going on with the Secret Service. And, you know, I was talking about how in when you just look at Pennsylvania, OK, you might be able to chalk that up as just incompetence. But when it happens twice and the same exact thing happens within two months and a new director has come on and another assassin utilize that same fatal funnel that they allowed to occur, um, then you have to start asking, is there something nefarious going on inside the Secret Service? Right. And I are said, they, are they we, purposely not doing their job? Right. And when you add that with all the rhetoric <laughs> and the fact that those people that are at the top of the Secret Service are leftist, the people at the top of the bureau are leftist, the, the, the FBI special agent in charge of Miami office that was standing next to the Secret Service director yesterday is the guy that uh, the whistleblower said they had to scrub the, the uh, executives and the FBI made him scrub his social media because they had so much hate uh, filled uh, uh, posts about Trump on it. So How do you give the a guy like that, that a job when, when ultimately part leftists. of his job is to protect Trump? Well, because they're because they're leftists. And so the people doing the investigation stuff, they're leftists. The politicians are leftists. They were praising my uh, in that press conference yesterday. And and so what I was trying to say to Stuart Varney is that when you look at the totality of the circumstances, that's what I was saying when he cut me off. When you look at the totality of circumstances and the evidence, um, it is clear that the Democrat Party 
wants Trump dead. And and when I say the Democrat Party, I'm talking about the people who chose Kamala but didn't allow people to vote whether they want Kamala as as the uh, the candidate for president. Um, I'm talking about the Democrat Party that's made up of a power base that when Trump looks at Kamala Harris and says she's a Marxist, she just smiles at him. You know, these are these are the Democrats that propel narratives forward and that people repeat. And when you add that to the fact that this this FBI has manufactured evidence and spied on Americans that work for Trump, when you look at the fact that they've used the DOJ uh, to to make up felonies to go after Trump about the same judges to do the cases. You look at the Secret Service that keeps allowing these fatal funnels to occur. And then you look at the rhetoric that's being pushed forward that literally says he needs to be shot in the head or taken out. It you you can come to no other uh, no other conclusion except for the fact the Democrat Party wants him dead. They couldn't put him in jail, so they want him dead. And I don't think from an investigative standpoint, that is too far out of the realms of reality that you could, if it was anybody else but Trump and it was anybody else but politicians, you probably could could bring up enough for a conspiracy theory to connect these people, not a conspiracy, but a conspiracy to connect these people and get a grand jury indictment. I think it's that obvious. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I, I agree. If it wasn't Trump, right, if it wasn't a guy running for president, uh, a firebrand like Trump that people uh, love, love to hate and others love to love, uh, you're right. Um, I think it was, you know, somebody who's not in the public eye. I think you'd probably have a slam dunk case. Folks, we're on with Jonathan Gilliam. He's a Navy SEAL, former FBI agent and author of the book Sheep No More. And I, I think it. I think you're right, and and I agree. And I guess you know when people invite me on a show, it, they, they're getting you know a radio guy giving an opinion, and when they invite you on the show, they're getting a former Navy SEAL, you know, retired FBI guy. So I, I I would suppose that you know maybe that was part of why he was thinking you know that your your observation that they want him dead is um, somehow something you could not claim legitimately, but that's something you were claiming. You know, it's not like something, <laughs> I, I just didn't see why, why that was a, a big deal uh, for, for him uh, per se. I just, I really, you know, to me, it just seemed uh, odd, but yeah. it's not a, a critique on him. It's really more of a critique, I think, on the sensitivity that is abounding in in our media where it's, Every type of free speech moment that we have is met with some sort of resistance from any side, right? It's, it it yeah. seems like there's few places left where you can go and say, I think so-and-so is an a-hole. And okay, great. I love the guy. <laughs> let's let's but, talk but about see, here, why. Here's what you got to realize about, about me is that I don't approach any of this with my opinion. I approach right. this with a, a, a looking at the totality of the evidence and the circumstances and I consistently go back to that before I add any of my knowledge and experience and understanding into the equation. And when I say to something like that profound, I've never been kicked off a show. I've never said anything that was overly provocative. I've just stuck to the facts. For me to say that today is something. It means something because that is what I see. I wasn't influenced by some conspiracy. I didn't have anybody tell me this. I simply sat down, collected the facts of what's occurring, and this is the only avenue that makes sense, is that they are conspiring to either put him in jail for the rest of his life, Trump, or get him killed. They may not be hiring people to go out and kill him. They may not be. Right, uh, and you didn't say they were trying to kill him. You said they want him dead. And but they are creating the atmosphere to to get people to go do it. And they're also as far as the agencies go, which you have to remember, the people at the top of these agencies are politicians as well. So they are a part of that political party. They are actually making it possible so that, it, you know, if you know that you live in an area where bears live and you don't like your spouse, and every night you leave the door wide open with a stake sitting right next to your wife's bed or where she sleeps, obviously there's a possibility that a bear is going to come in and eat that stake in her. 
And if you mm-hmm. do that every night until she dies, you have basically murdered her. And that's what's happening. They continuously push people's buttons and then they continuously leave this fatal funnel open on all the perimeters of Trump's rallies or golf games. And what happens? The bears come in and they set up shop. And that's what's happening. Yeah, really, really good analysis. And I agree with you. Uh, I think that's exactly what's going on. And we can't pretend that it's not going on because that it seems to me that's exactly what's happening. Folks, Jonathan Gilliam is our guest. every other month. <laughs> yeah, and, and, that, and that's really the point, right? When, when they were putting him in jail incessantly with all of these different cases in different states and all, all this stuff, one could have said they want to end his career. They're desperately interfering with an election. They're trying to make sure he doesn't run. They're pushing everything they got to make sure that he won't, that he'll bail out and say, I'm going to go with my family. But once the bullets start flying and people show up with guns, I think it's a different story. The only possible outcome there is, you know, they miss or he's dead. And I think the statement you made was accurate. Uh, folks, Jonathan Gillum's our guest. Jonathan Gillum, thanks for sticking around. I want to get your take on these exploding pagers and Hezbollah straight ahead. Don't go anywhere. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. Mr. Call Screener, who is a budding radio star, by the way. Richie Valdez is terrific. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. All right, amigos, welcome back, familia. We continue the conversation with retired Navy SEAL, retired FBI agent Jonathan Gillum. And Jonathan, I want to get your take on what's going on here. Um, The war between Israel and Hamas continues, and now... It's spilling over into Lebanon. Uh, Hezbollah is blaming Israel, saying it's part of that war, for a bunch of pagers going off, killing nine and injuring about 3,000 people in total. Uh, I watched a video of this. People were standing in the market and just things in their pockets just started exploding. Uh, Another guy had something on his waist. That just blew up and took out, looked like half of his body. Uh, I don't know how you know, genuine the stuff I'm looking at is, but it it seems kind of crazy. What can you tell us about this? Well, I know one thing, if somebody went on Stuart Varney's show and said that uh, Israel was killing Hamas, he'd kick them right off the show. (laughs) (laughs) Now, listen, I'll tell you something. I think this may be one of the greatest attacks in the history of mankind. I know that there was only nine of these uh, Hezbollah terrorists killed, but uh, what is it, 9,000 you said that are injured? I mean, 3,000 that, I mean, it's unbelievable the ingenuity that went into this. And, uh, I just, I don't know how they did it, how they were able to get these guys to buy these. I mean, I didn't even know anybody still used pagers. So so the the fact that they were able to key in on that and utilize that, that right there shows you outside the box thinking. And I, and I, I'm a big proponent, as anybody who knows me, uh, I'm a big proponent of outside-the-box thinking. I wrote in my book, Sheep No More, where uh, a senior FBI agent got really mad at me one time because I took too long to basically lay the groundwork with a, uh, with somebody that we're interviewing. And I went out of my way to like win this person over just so I could ask him one question. It took about almost two hours of just having a conversation so I could weed one question in there. And on the way back to the office, he pulls over the car and he uh, puts it in park and he just yells at me. He goes, you know what your problem is? 90% of what you think about or the way you think about doing things is outside the box. This is the FBI. We do everything in the box. And I looked at him and I said, Benny, that's the greatest compliment I've ever had from someone. And that, that really ticked him off. But that, that is what this was. That was outside of the box thinking. And that's the way you make an enemy so paranoid that they're afraid to go to sleep at night. Right. Yeah. Talking about like psychological warfare combined with actual ground warfare. And uh, Israel's saying that no comment, right? No comment that it wasn't them, at least what what I'm reading here. Um, Do you know anything about that? Have have any of your sources uh, said that Israel claims responsibility? 
nobody's reached out to me on that. But the thing about Israel is Israel is still a tactical thinking nation, and they don't feel the need to tell everybody everything that they do. Um, I really wish the United States would get back to that. And um, I don't have a lot of criticism of, of President Trump when he was in office, uh, but that is one of my criticisms is when he's back in office, and I pray to the good Lord that he is, um, I, he needs to take that more seriously. There doesn't need to be sound bites. The American people need to know that we're successful or that we're safe. And uh, I don't think we need to be projecting what we do every time we do it and take credit for it. And I think what Israel, if I was Israel, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even say anything about it. Yeah. Just let it happen. Yeah. Like they what, say on the street, do? killers don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's like gangster you're, stuff. You're so, you're so street, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only reference that came to mind. Folks, Jonathan Gillum is our guest of Sheep No More. Check him out at JonathanGillum.com. Uh, now, how do people follow you if they want to check you out on, on the uh, on any of the social media, well, they can they look for uh, Jonathan T Gilliam, and uh, like on Instagram, it's real Jonathan T Gilliam. But usually, if they just put that in there, I mean, I'm like I'm amazed when I look up Jonathan Gilliam how many there are. So you got to remember the T. But I'm the guy with the big beard, not the little beard. There's another guy like that, but I have the big beard <laughs> in my in my picture. So you'll know that it's me. And um, and you know, people follow me. I do interact with people on there because I feel like. Um, I feel like we're part of a team. It's not that they're following me. They just uh, follow my, my profile. Um, and I feel like it's the one way that, you know, we can all kind of still come together uh, and actually um, have a know, share realities and have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, brother, I want to thank you for being here. You are a gentleman, a scholar, and a patriot. I'm looking forward to having you back as we get more info on this stuff. Thank you, sir. You got it, buddy. God bless. God bless. All right, folks, and your calls and more when we come back. Don't go anywhere. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. I just want to note the FBI is continuing to investigate the apparent assassination attempt of the former president uh, that occurred on Sunday in Florida. We are grateful that he is safe. The entire Justice Department, including in particular the FBI, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of Florida, the National Security Division, are all coordinating closely with our local state law enforcement partners on the ground. We will all work together to tirelessly determine accountability in this matter. We will spare no resource in this investigation. That is the United States Attorney General Merrick Garland uh, sounding as insincere as he usually does, saying that they are committed to this investigation. And with a minute to go, I want to go to Larry Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, WRNN. Larry, go for it. Good morning or good evening. That Guess too. what? I can't figure out how our Secret Service fired four shots. I mean, you know, these super, super duper troopers, they fired four shots and missed. Something's wrong. Something something doesn't equate somewhere. Yeah, yeah good point, right? They, they were the only ones firing shots, and none of them hit the guy. The guy ran away, got in a car, and got miles away before they were able to catch him. Uh, very good point. We need better marksmen, and maybe a counter-sniper team might help, and a secure perimeter. Larry, shout out to you. Folks, I'm coming back. It's Rich Valdez. Hour number two is on deck. Don't move a muscle. city that never sleeps 17 miles from madison square garden new york city it's america at night 
with Rich Valdez, America's favorite late night talk program featuring interesting guests from around the world and calls from across America. And now, here is your host, Rich Valdez. Hi there, good evening, and what's up, America? I am Rich Valdez, Valdez with an S, at Rich Valdez on all of the social media. Welcome to hour number two of our program. It's the uh, Tuesday night edition, and our phone number, if you want to join us, 833-482-5337, 833-4-VALDEZ. And a few things going on today. Uh, yesterday, we announced that Puff Daddy was arrested, and today he was indicted, uh, the United States attorney for the Southern District of New York, Damian Williams, read the indictment uh, specifically saying that he held these uh, orgy styled parties with male prostitutes that he called freak offs and recorded them and used the footage as blackmail to the participants. Listen to this. They also seized evidence of the freak offs, electronic devices that contain images and videos of the freak offs with multiple victims. And they seize cases and cases of the kinds of personal lubricant and baby oil that Combs' staff allegedly used to stock hotel rooms for the freak offs. More than 1,000 bottles altogether. Holy cow, that sounds slippery. A thousand bottles of baby oil and lubricant. <laughs> that's some really freaky freak off. Anyway, uh, that's what's going on with P. Diddy. He was denied bail today. And. He's not getting out. Uh, they're saying that he's a uh, flight risk, and given the nature of the crimes, he's not going anywhere. We had a conversation with retired FBI agent uh, Jonathan Gilliam, and he said that for each prostitute that was brought across state lines for the purpose of sex work, it's 10 years for each way, so 20 years on the round trip. And if this happened multiple times over multiple years with multiple people, you're looking at a lot, a lot, a lot of years, so... Uh, doesn't look good for P. Diddy at this point, but innocent until proven guilty. Then you've got Israel, uh, Syria and Lebanon. They're blaming Israel after pagers, which nobody knows that was used, right? Who Do you know anybody with a pager? Because I don't. Uh, but pagers that uh, we did not know were still in use exploded on people's waists in their pockets. They all belong to about a thousand members of the group Hezbollah. And nine of them were killed. The rest of them blew up and um, were injured. And as well as the people in their vicinity were injured, about 3,000 in total were injured. Uh, massive attack. And um, Israel is not uh, accepting responsibility. They, they've made no comment on this thus far. But Syria and Lebanon uh, are blaming the uh, Hezbollah attack on Israel. An attack on Hezbollah, I should clarify. Uh, let me see. What else do we have here? <clears throat> Representative Andy Harris, we've had him on the show before. I actually met him. I hung out with him for a few minutes uh, at the uh, CPAC conference in Budapest, Hungary, just a few months ago. Uh, he was elected as the new Freedom Caucus chair. Maybe we should invite him on uh, to uh, find out what his agenda is for the Freedom Caucus. He's a good guy. I think he's a doctor, too, by the way, I'm like a physician, MD. Uh, let's see. The U.S. moves 130 troops to Alaska amid increase in Russian military activity in the region. But remember, Kamala Harris says there are not any active duty troops serving in any war zones anywhere in the world. Now, Alaska is not a war zone, but we, we found out yesterday when we played the fact check on that, that was absolutely fake. And the fact check came right from Martha Raddatz of ABC News. So ABC fact checking themselves a, a week and a half later, two weeks later. Unreal. Let's see. Microsoft is saying that Russians have made viral videos falsely accusing uh, Kamala Harris of a hit and run. I have not seen these videos, so uh, I don't know if you have. I definitely have not. But it's no surprise to me that Russia is going to make fake videos. Iran is going to make fake videos in either direction, right? They, they What they want to do is subvert our republic. They want to make sure that people don't believe in our political process. They want to make sure that they poison the body politic. That is how propaganda works. That's the entire essence of what they do. They want us to become apathetic. So we just, ah, who cares? It's either crook A or crook B. We know it doesn't matter who you vote for. They're all the same. You know, today, political people would say, that's the uniparty. It doesn't matter what color they are, the red gang, the blue gang, they're all a gang. 
there's a lot of truth in all these statements, but it doesn't mean that you don't vote and it doesn't mean you don't get involved. Imagine if Donald Trump, El Trumpito, did all this magnus, the 45th president of these United States, took that approach and said, you know what, rather than subject my life for the next decade to death threats, to assassination attempts, to being jailed uh, and imprisoned falsely and having to fight like heck to, to prove my own innocence when I haven't done anything wrong, uh, to serve as a president and be spied upon, to be impeached twice, uh, all these different things, when he could just be sitting pretty with his supermodel wife, doing what he does in, in any number of the properties he owns, and enjoying his life. But he didn't, because he believes in America. And he wants to help. And he's putting his money where his mouth is, and he's, he's doing it. He's rolling up his sleeves, and he's putting in the work. So becoming an apathetic voter and saying, ah, oh, it doesn't matter, crook A, crook B, who cares? What difference does it make? It makes a lot of difference. Don't be that person. Be the person that does the job. That's my advice to you for today. And uh, the check, uh, you can put the check in the mail for that one. Let's see. Uh, trips to Disney meant for homeless kids went to NYC employees' children instead. I'm going to make a statement here, whether you like it or not. I bet you anything these were Democrats. This is a very Democrat thing to do. In my time in politics, I learned that Democrats will milk any situation they can milk. All right, so trips to Disney meant for homeless kids. So Disney, out of the kindness of their hearts, says, hey, we're going to give you guys some free tickets to Disney. And, and here's a trip, and maybe some airlines donated some free trips, and they give them to the city of New York, and the city of New York is supposed to give them to homeless kids to get a chance to go to Disney. And what happens? These homeless, the NYC employees, they give them to their own kids. Unreal. We'll get to that in a little bit. That's, that's disgusting. Honestly, if you have a job, you could take your own kid to Disney. National Taco Day will now be on a Tuesday. <laughs> that's funny. That's very funny. And again, today is Constitution Day. And back in 1787, the U.S. Constitution uh, was completed in Philadelphia and signed by a majority of the 55 delegates of the Constitutional Convention. Nine states ratified the document in June of 1788, and it became the supreme law of the land in the United States on March 4th of 1789. In 1976, there was uh, some other stuff that happened. I'll get to that in open phones across America in the next hour. Then, another interesting story I want to share with you. This one here in Yahoo. A majority of young adults have high blood pressure and don't even know it. I want to find out what's behind the alarming trend, but apparently there's a correlation between, get this, as if this is breaking news, but it, this is from, from right now. Sodium may contribute to high blood pressure. Go figure. Listen to this. A recent study found that a majority of people with heart disease are consuming twice the recommended daily amount of sodium. Now that can put a person with heart disease at risk for other cardiovascular complications. It can raise their blood pressure, which can damage blood vessels. It can force the, war the heart to work a lot harder. It can also cause your body to retain fluid. Dr. Luke Laffin with the Cleveland Clinic says it's best to stick with a low sodium diet. Um, but it's important to understand that less than 5% of the sodium that we ingest on average is from the salt shaker. The majority of sodium is in the foods that we already eat. So heart disease is still the number one cause of death in America. It's impacting a larger number of young people than it ever has before. And Dr. Keith Ablau, a former Fox News medical correspondent, he's also a best-selling author and media personality, he's here with us to talk about how the government and the medical industry are still too mired in bureaucracy and influenced by Big Pharma to let Americans actually get the help they need. Dr. Ablau, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. My pleasure. So talk to us about this again, because I, I realize, you know, I'm being a little tongue in cheek here and sarcastic uh, about the sodium and whatever. But <laughs> it, obviously, this is still a thing. Right. And more and more people. I mean, I guess it's more and more people when you're my age. Right. I'm 46. So I guess more and more people my age <laughs> are, are coming uh, uh, up with uh, or coming down with with high blood pressure. But give us the scoop. What's going on with heart disease and high blood pressure? Well, absolutely. First of all, uh, you know, the food that we eat is loaded with sodium. Uh, people need to take charge more than ever over how they deal with their health because the medical system post-COVID sort of crumbled. And, you know, 
you can go to a doctor, you're likely to be seen, even though these are good people and they, they have their own expertise, but you're likely to seen, be seen by a nurse practitioner or a nurse cl- clinician. Yeah, um, exactly. And because of that, that's fine, you know, but the doctors, I think, feel dispirited. And so they turn off their analytic, uh, co- you know, sort of capacity and they just go along to get along too frequently. And so because of that, people are left somewhat to their own devices to say, well, how can I help myself? How can I press forward? And it happens that there is a naturally occurring uh, molecule that merits a, a good look for folks who have severe atherosclerosis, who have blockages in their arteries. And uh, I've been working with this company because they're in a beef with the FDA that's standing in the way of them making the claim that this will help clear out your arteries. So that's just an aside. But um, I think natural remedies have their place. And because of big pharma, because of the FDA, perhaps because of the connection between the two of those things, people are dissuaded from giving them a shot. Mm. Well, and and how does this... um... How do you remedy that? Well, my idea was, uh, in this case, there's a molecule called Cavidex that's actually um, cyclodextrin. It's a, not to get too technical, but it's a donut-shaped polysaccharide. And inside the whole of the molecule, so picture a donut, the center of the donut is empty, and it's, it loves fat because of the way the molecule's built It wants to fill that hole with fat from your bloodstream. And there's every reason to believe that it can literally go around your bloodstream, your cardiac cardiac arteries, et cetera, and collect fat even from plaque, reducing the plaque or removing it. Now, that's an amazing thing. Um, Cyclodextrin is a naturally occurring molecule. You can't patent it. And so this particular company is in a struggle with the FDA because they say, well, listen, we've done imaging on lots of patients who've received this molecule and their arteries seem to get cleared out. Um, So why can't we make that claim? And of course, the FDA says, well, you can do that after you spend, you know, 10 million or 15 million on a variety of studies. But no one's going to do that for a molecule that's naturally occurring and can't be patented. That's right, you can't protect folks, it, so you right. can't make money off of it for a few years. Exactly. So my idea was, hey, can the FDA kind of come up with a giant red asterisk or something and put it on the website of a company like, it happens to be Colrem, that makes Cavidex? Can they do that? So that they say, listen, we don't buy this. We, this is not a double-blind placebo-controlled study. Um, and therefore, you know, buyer beware. But here it is. It's kind of like they do with a lot of supplements, this. right? That say, you know, FDA has not approved these claims or whatever. True. The, the issue here is that the founder of this company is on a quest. He was given only a limited time to live because his arteries were so clogged Oh, wow. with fat, right? And he treated himself, and he's here to tell the tale. He cleared out his arteries, he says, and then doctors in America started to use it, and they say the same thing. Hey, our patients are vastly improved. So they want to make the claim, uh, listen, it clears out your arteries. That's where the FDA says, no, you got to use language that's nonspecific, like good for your heart, okay? Uh-huh. But that, uh, if you, uh, the founder of the company is a bit of a gladiator, and he's like, uh, no, I'm going to make my claims. And that's where I wonder, could there be some middle ground where the FDA says, well, if you're going to put that on your website, you're going to include our big red asterisk that says that we've kind of flagged you for not doing that 10 or $20 million study or series of studies. Um, Because people do need to think about these holistic remedies because otherwise, you know, even the gifts, and there are gifts from big pharma, right? Some of these molecules are fabulous that they develop, but the other ones will get absolutely buried by the marketing muscle of the pharmaceutical industry. 
Wow. Now, Dr. Abla, let everybody know how they could learn more about uh, this work that you're uh, involved with and uh, this particular product. Well, in this case, they can go to, it's C-H-O-L-R-E-M, callrem.com, uh, or look up Cavadex with a C, and check it out for themselves, get to know it themselves, and see if it seems like something that they want to take a look at and see if it works for them and is helpful. And that's something they can consult with their doctors about. The only thing I will say is that, you know, my dad's, 95 now and i've noticed that when i bring up natural remedies to his doctors doctor always says nah i wouldn't i have the sneaking suspicion as a doctor myself that mm-hmm. if it were his dad or brother <laughs> <wouldn't> say eh. <laughs> right <laughs> exactly because there's no upside for my dad's doctor respectfully uh, he's a nice man, but um, there's no upside for him to say, sure, give it a try, because then he's going to write that in the medical chart. Um, it, he's now condoned or uh, stood behind a, you know, natural substance, adding it to the regimen. He doesn't know everything there is to no, know. He can't kind of lean on the right. FDA and be like, well, it was approved. Um, right. And exactly. so too much risk. But it. It, for what? Well, for, maybe for, for helping doctor. my dad. Yeah, no, exactly. Too much risk for the doctor in exchange for the potential gain for the client because he's got no dog in the hunt. Right. He's not going to say, I'll take the risk for your dad, Keith. Right. Doc, I want to uh, thank you. I got to pause you right here because we got to hit the break. Folks, Dr. Keith Ablau, former Fox News medical correspondent. Sir, I appreciate you. God bless. We'll be right back. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. This is America. This is Night. This is Rich Valdez. All right, amigos, welcome back, familia. We continue our conversation to wrap up with Dr. Keith Abla, former Fox News medical correspondent, best-selling author, and you see him all over the media. And uh, he, you can find him at keithablau.com. Now, Doc, I know you were just telling me about your dad. You know, it's funny, as you were saying, I, I had a similar situation with my dad. Um, but, but I had a very liberal doctor for my dad, and he would say, you know what, give it a try. Go ahead. He was like a year from retirement, so he was open to things. But I want you to let everybody know how they can find you. Absolutely. It is KeithAblo.com. My other site is pain to power the number 2 pain to powercom and if folks are looking for that, looking to rebound from any adversity in their lives, that's what I love to do. I love to work with people to win. Outstanding. Well, hopefully we'll have you back. We'll talk a little bit more about Pain to Power and the work you're doing there. Dr. Keith Ablo, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. My and pleasure. folks, thank you, you. you bet. God bless you. Have a good night. And we come back and we have more conversation this time about a whole lot of stuff that's going on with suspicious voter roll algorithms in New York, Ohio, and 11 other states. Don't go anywhere. I'm Rich Valdez. registered voters in Alabama just got booted from the state voter rolls. That's after the Secretary of State, Wes Allen, ordered the removal of all non-citizens who were registered. But how did non-citizens get registered in the first place? WAFF 48's Nick Ballinger spoke to the Secretary of State to get to the bottom of this story. Nick? Yeah, Margo, when I asked Secretary Allen how these people got registered to vote in the first place, he couldn't give me a clear answer just yet, saying it was still being investigated. So, 
things are going on in Alabama, in Oregon, and other states all over the place, and even in Ohio. And there's a preliminary report submitted to the Ohio Secretary of State and the Ohio Attorney General just yesterday uh, that identifies a complex cryptographic algorithm embedded in the voter ID numbers of these three counties in Ohio and regarding their registration. This is pretty interesting stuff. Um, the uh, petitioner here, Andrew Paquette, Dr. Andrew Paquette, he um, – he says that he believes these were designed for, quote, the purpose of covert data manipulation, end quote. And he put together this 22-page uh, heavily illustrated mathematical analysis. And Dr. Paquette has found that an algorithmic scheme based on modular mathematics was employed, likely unbeknownst to Ohio State Board of Elections officials, to determine the assignment of voter identification numbers in three Ohio counties. Franklin County, Lucas County, and Montgomery County. Now, that was hard enough for me to read, right? Because I don't know anything about complex mathematics. But I want to bring in our guest who's going to help uh, us all understand this a little bit better. Uh, Dr. Jerome Corsi, he's the co-founder of God's Five Stones. He, he's been on InfoWars in the past. You've seen him all over the place, a number of books that he's written. And he's leading an investigation into the suspicious voter roll algorithms in New York, Ohio, and 11 other states. Dr. Jerome Corsi, welcome to the show. Uh, it's great to be with you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. So talk to us about this. So from what I'm gathering, and, uh, you know, I'm a layman here, uh, they put together this, this complex mathematical algorithmic scheme so that they could identify voters from several particular counties for the purpose of what? to see how they voted, uh, what's the, uh, to be able to change their votes, what's the end game here? The, it's it's God, godsfivestones.com, God, where we have all the data. We, we filed a complaint yesterday with the uh, Secretary of State in Ohio. We've been working with them for several weeks. Uh, the scheme is uh, to, to impose an algorithm, a, a complex mathematical formula, which allows for false voters to um, people don't exist to get yet a state legitimate ID. Uh, they, they do it by, it's like a card uh, marking scheme. It, it, the cryptographics are like a card marking scheme mm. where you you create false cards, which are the mark cards, and you put them in the deck. Those are the non existent voters. And you give them real state ID numbers. And so the problem is that they don't exist. But yet, if you, whoever's designed the scheme, the criminals, want to have a mail-in vote, they can call on these false numbers, which have a yet a legitimate state ID, and you can say, give them a mail-in ballot. That mail-in mm -hmm. ballot is voted, and that mail-in ballot has the same number to it, the state ID, uh, the legitimate state ID, and it matches the person who requested the ballot, and so therefore it's countable, it's sort of it's certifiable. The numbers match, but yet the voter doesn't exist. That's the wow. scheme. It, it's it's, it's <laughs> extremely complex mathematically, but once we've discovered it, and Andrew Paquette is a genius who figured this out. We have this now in about 11 different states, and it is a, a scheme to say, okay, well, Kamala Harris is not, you know, she's not doing quite as well as Trump, but she's gaining. And so, therefore, we have all these false voter IDs that are buried in the number systems of the state uh, board of election, actual voter ID, legitimate voters that don't exist, and we can vote them. And when they vote, they have legitimate numbers, so they match they're certifiable, but there's no voter there. It's a really complex scheme. You've got to look at God's Vice Five Stone, God's Five, G O D, no apostrophe S, F I V, spell it out, S T O N E S, plural, dot com. We have all the information we filed with the Ohio State Secretary of State yesterday. It's all there, and it's in fact verifiable. We found this down in about 11 states, and we're going further. If people will help us with this, godsfivestones.com. 
I think we're going to prove this is a scheme that's being used throughout the country. And it will be the, the way the Democrats want to steal the election by voting these mail-in ballots that can be certifiable because they forge these numbers into the database. That's the key. And so, in effect, they could go ahead and plug in whichever voter they felt like later because this voter, in effect, doesn't exist. And if they need, I don't know, 1,000 votes, 1,800 votes, 10,000 votes, whatever it is to win or be over the top, they can just order those because they have them. Right. They can say, like, do you want Kamala Harris to win by 1% or 3% or 5%? Do you want it to be early in the afternoon or late at night? Do you want the wow. economy to stop? Because they've got the votes there that are non-existent voters that they've created in the database that, that get legitimate state ID numbers because this scheme, because this mathematical scheme, the, the algorithms allow these voters to be created in the system and get legitimate state ID numbers and be voted even though they don't exist. So you'd have to go out and see and do a field survey, see if these people really existed and you realize the the, the mail-in vote voters who are voting are fictional. And they're fictional by the algorithm that creates the database. It's complex. We do all explain it on gods5stones.com. God's five stones, plural, spell out five, no apostrophe in the gods.com. And you'll see all the reports we filed on this. We've done it in Ohio. We show the algorithms exist in New York, they exist in New Jersey, and we're about to show you that they exist in about 10 other states. Now, Dr. Jerome Corsi, um, you talk about the Modulus 8 secret algorithm, and, and you explain it well at the website you just pointed out, gods5stones.com. But my question to you is, what relief are you seeking? Uh, how, what do you expect the Secretary of State in Ohio or these other states to do? Well, I expect them, first of all, to acknowledge these algorithms are there and then to do really special due diligence with the mail-in votes. In other words, we've got to sample the mail-in votes and send people out and see if these people really exist because they could all be fictional. And we've got to, once, the, once the scheme is discovered, it can't be used as if it weren't discovered. And so, therefore, the mail-in votes, whereas the fraud is going to occur, by these algorithms have to be exceptional due diligence to make sure that we survey these with field surveys or some other method to make sure these people really exist and really did cast mail-in votes and were really qualified to cast mail-in votes. Because the algorithms create fake, non-existent voters who have real legitimate state IDs because the system games them and they just go by the matching of the numbers. So somebody gets a, a fake ID dealt in the system like a wild card. Um, you know, this is like a card a scamming system where you mark cards. So they vote a marked card, a non-existent voter, got a real state ID. It looks like it voted. It cast the vote because they chose it to cast the vote, who's ever the criminals running the system. And the number matches the vote cast that looks like a legitimate vote, it will certify, but it isn't a real person. That's the point. It isn't a real person. Wow. Crazy stuff. Uh, Dr. Jerome Corsi, I want to thank you for bringing this to our attention. And uh, I want to remind the audience again, the website to find this is gods5stones.com, gods5stones.com. Now, what's your... Um, expectation. Well, you know what? Let me take a quick pause right here and come right back. Folks, we're coming right back with Dr. Jerome Corsi. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. Call now, 833-4-VALDEZ. That's 833-482-5337. 833-4-VALDEZ. That's Valdez with an S. America at Night 
your home for the best election coverage. All right, America, welcome back, amigos. We continue our conversation with Dr. Jerome Corsi. Um, his substack, go to the website, gods5stones.com. Now, Dr. Corsi, is that a reference to David and Goliath, the uh, five smooth yep. stones? Yes, it's, it's, it's David picking the uh, five, five stones from the brook that were the, the exact stones God had picked to defeat Goliath. And so we're trying to find the exact five stones that will defeat this election fraud to prevent it. That's, a, that's the whole goal, David versus Goliath. Amen to that. Now, let me ask you, what's your expectation with this? Because it seems uh, like really well thought out, really, um, you know, well put together. Uh, I'm just wondering, with 50 days to go till Election Day, is there enough time to correct these um, irregularities? There's always enough time. Uh, God always wins in, in these schemes when they're exposed. You know, if you're playing in a casino where the cards are marked, the, the casino can't prove you lost a game of blackjack. And so when people realize they're playing in a, in a game of election where there's algorithms that have false voters that can be used for mail-in votes, they'll see the scheme, how it works, that suddenly the voting stops and, and then all these votes come in in favor of the other candidate. And there's, cl- there's telltale signs of this. And we're trying to get people to be aware to watch the telltale signs and to know that they're in a scheme where the deck is stacked against them. And these algorithms are mathematical. They can be proved. Between now and Election Day, we can have this shown in about, I think, 25 or 30 states. We're well along the way. We've already got definite proof the algorithms exist in Ohio, they exist in New York, they exist in New Jersey. We're going about, we'll be releasing data very quickly about uh, Harris County in Texas and Pennsylvania. And we're going through each of the states working with all of the people in voter integrity, taking their data and validating it according to this algorithmic analysis in which we can show there are marked cards where non-voters are given ID numbers by the state and can at will by, the, by these rogue players cast mail-in ballots that will be certifiable but yet the voters don't exist. That's the key. Now, I want to switch gears quickly before we wrap. And um, I, I know you uh, you had a lot of um, c- criticism for the Pope and, and uh, the Church's um, seeming acceptance of the LGBTQ agenda over the summertime. Um, tell us a little bit about that and, and what's evolved from that. Well, I've, I've written a book called The Anti-Globalist Manifesto, and I've created an anti-globalist alliance in the United States and in Italy. And I'm working very, very closely with Archbishop Vigano, who was excommunicated by Pope Francis for opposing the LGBT agenda being brought into the Catholic Church. I'm Catholic. I was raised Catholic. And I'm opposed to this, this radical sexual agenda that wants to mutilate our children and deprive them of having you know, a, a legitimate ability to procreate. So I, I think we'll be having a statement here very quickly. I'll be probably going to Italy before the election to work with Archbishop Vigano to get a statement on behalf of Catholics saying that we oppose this radical leftist agenda. we we'll go back to traditional values, bring God back into America, and this is central to getting truth into our elections. We've got to get back to truth and God. We can't let this radical communist neo-Marxist agenda destroy our country. Amen to that. Jerome Corsi, I want to thank you for being with us. Folks, check him out at gods5stones.com, gods5stones.com. You are a gentleman, a scholar, and a patriot, and I appreciate you taking the time to be with us tonight. Anytime, Rick. Always my great pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks, your calls and more are coming up straight ahead. Keep it locked right here. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. Call now, 833-4-VALDEZ. That's 833-482-5337. 833-482-5337. Four Valdez. 
That's Valdez with an S. Now, 833-4-VALDEZ. That's 833-482-5337. 833-4-VALDEZ. That's Valdez with an S. All right, amigos, welcome back. And a couple of things I'm going to get into in the next hour, open phones across America where we take your calls on everything under the sun. 833-482-5337, 833-4-VALDEZ is the number. And uh, start getting your calls in now. This way we can get them up on the call board and we can get to the call portion of the program sooner rather than later. And as a couple of people on hold, I'm going to get to one of you guys uh, before the end of this um, segment. But I want to announce a couple of things. Uh, Pastor Lin, who has been detained in China for 18 years, has been released from prison. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then we've got uh, a beach that goes from Virginia to Maryland and Delaware has been closed. Why? Medical waste is washing ashore. That's in Newsweek. I'll get into that in a little bit. Tito Jackson, the older brother of Michael Jackson and a member of the Jackson Five, has died at 70 years old. May he rest in peace. And listen to this. The United States Navy has commissioned its first co-ed submarine. I don't know. That that kind of gives me Diddy vibes. <laughs> I'll give you the story on that when we come back. Anyway, I want to go to one of your calls at least. Let's see. Who do we got? Dean in Lordsburg, Arizona, streaming the show, richvaldez.com. Go right ahead, Dean. What's on your mind? Yes. Last week on Coast to Coast, I believe it was, uh, they said that the head of the NSA uh, stepped aside or resigned or something, and then they put in a new guy uh, whose specialty was crypto mathematics, and his secondary uh, was something like at- atmospheric phenomenon. But the crypto mathematics seems to be going along with what you were talking about. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know anything about it, honestly, um, about the crypto mathematics, but I... I um I found this just as interesting as you did, and if that is in fact the case, I'm, I'll I'll take a look at it during the break, and see uh, what you know if we could find any similarities here. But the um, the story that Jerome Corsi is uh, putting out, the uh, report that he's presented to the Ohio Secretary of State, fascinating, right? It's a fascinating uh, story, just you know from a news perspective. Wow, right? The fact that they have this complicated algorithm that these um, this crack squad that he has was able to kind of crack the code, if you will. I think it's uh, remarkable. And um, should this be, you know, proven to be true and able to be acted upon before the election, I think it's a great thing. Uh, My bigger concern is, can we get there? Can we get to achieving uh, justice or having the right thing be done in time? I don't know. But thanks for the tip. I'll take a look at the uh, NSA chief who specializes in crypto mathematics. I don't even know what crypto mathematics is. Uh, but have, you know, a couple of uh, bucks in cryptocurrency. <laughs> That's all I could say about that. Dean in Lordsburg, Arizona, thank you for your call, sir. I appreciate it. And we're going to get to the rest of your calls and more straight ahead. I don't want you to go anywhere, but give us a call. 833-482-5337 is the phone number. 833-4-VALDEZ. As always, I'm looking forward to speaking with our good friends in New York, in Oregon, in California, Florida, course in Chicago, all over the country. Uh, we've got a lot of great affiliates and I'm glad you guys are tuned in live and national. 833-482-5337, 833-4-VALDEZ. Don't go anywhere. I'm Rich Valdez and we're coming right back. the city that never sleeps 17 miles from madison square garden new york city it's america at night with rich valdez america's favorite late night talk program featuring interesting guests from around the world and calls from across america and now here is your host rich valdez (laughs) 
Hi there, good evening, and what's up, America? I am Rich Valdez, Valdez with an S, at Rich Valdez on all of the social media. Welcome to the third hour of the program. The phone number, if you want to join us, 833-482-5337, 833-4-VALDEZ. And so much to talk about. Obviously, big stories today. Uh, Sean Puff Daddy Combs P. Diddy, he was... Um, Arraigned. He was after his indictment. He was arrested last night. Uh, big charges: child, tra- uh, not child, sex trafficking, uh, transporting prostitutes across state lines, um, recording people, coercing people, uh, blackmailing them with videos of these freak off parties that he would have. Um, I don't think they charged him for all the lubricant, but apparently they found a thousand bottles of baby oil and other lubricant. I mean, just crazy stuff that's going on. And at the uh, press conference with the United States attorney, uh, Damian Williams uh, from the Southern District of New York, uh, he was asked about the connection with uh, Jeffrey Epstein. And consequently, Diddy's being held with no bail and He's being held in the same facility where Jeffrey Epstein met his maker, allegedly. Uh, But listen to this. Does the memo address or is your office concerned with uh, with Combs's safety in custody, given um, given what happened with Epstein? So we are concerned with anyone's safety whenever they are um, detained prior to trial. It's part of our obligations to keep people um, safe as well. Um, it's part of the criminal justice system. So, um, But I do not draw any sort of connection between um, Jeffrey Epstein's suicide and um, what may or may not happen um, to any other defendant while they are um, detained pretrial. And of course, the decision whether to um, detain the defendant will be up to a judge. Our position is that pretrial detention is warranted under the law and based on the facts of this case. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Again, that is the um, district attorney for, um, or the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of uh, New York. Now, President Trump also commented on the fact that he was called by not only Kemal Eris, but he was also called by Joe El Baboso Biden uh, to make sure that, you know, that he actually was alive and that he was still breathing and that the, the job was not completed by uh, Mr. Uh, Ryan Routh, the um, alleged shooter or would-be shooter in the uh, foiled assassination attempt uh, from Sunday. Listen to this. President Biden called me yesterday. It was very nice. We had a very nice conversation. I appreciated that he called about, you know, what happened the other day. And he says, <laughs> he's committed. He's committed. No, but, and today, I, a little while ago, I got a, nice, a very nice call from Kamala. No, it was very nice. It was very nice. It's, it's, it was very, very nice, and, and we appreciate that. But we have to take back our country. We have to win. We're going to win, and we're going to make America great again. That's all there is to it. Very simple, right? All there is to it. And you might remember, on Monday, I spoke about an endorsement. And if you follow my Instagram account, at Rich Valdez with an S, you saw a video that I put out on Saturday or Sunday uh, regarding an endorsement that... El Trompito Donaldus Magnus, uh, the 45th president of these United States, got from a Latin music uh, superstar named Nicky Jam. And, of course, you know, all the people who've never listened to Spanish music go, who's that? Who? What? Uh, thinking they're funny. I must say, your ignorance of other cultures and other music isn't funny to me. But anyway, it's telling. Mr. Jam. Ah, who Trump called the she, by the way, because I guess he, he also didn't know who Nicky Jam was. Uh, Nicky Jam got himself into some hot water where a hugely popular Spanish rock band called Mana decided that they had a collaboration they had done with Nicky Jam. They were going to pull it from their streaming platforms so that he wouldn't make money off of it anymore because they said he was collaborating with a racist, i.e., uh, referring to uh, uh, President Trump. And Jam didn't make any statements about this, but he did take down the picture uh, that he had on his Instagram profile of him and Trump 
uh, where he made a joke about Trump calling him she, saying she's really hot when he's a, an actual he. And uh, and he was, you know, I have to say, he was the butt of many jokes in the uh, Spanish language media where they were saying, you know, uh, Trump gets endorsement from one of the biggest stars ever and calls the guy a she. So I don't know if he's re removed the endorsement officially or if he just removes, removed the photo from his Instagram. But I have to say, when you take the bold step of endorsing a guy like Trump, a guy that they're trying to kill, a guy that they're trying to jail, you better be prepared to receive criticism from people that are going to say that you're a sellout, that you're this, you're that, and the third. And what I find interesting about the whole thing is Nikki Jam, and again, you, you may or may not know the, the history of, of Nikki Jam and his rise to um, stardom, but he was hugely popular, I don't know, 25 years ago, still hugely popular today. Uh, he's had a, a really illustrious career, but 25 years ago, he was very popular all over Puerto Rico, and he uh, was a duo with uh, another huge, probably the biggest uh, reggaeton star there is, uh, Daddy Yankee. And these guys were all over the place. Then Nicky Jam had a whole story. It's a whole Netflix special on him, if you want to check it out. Um, and he gets involved in, in drugs and um, addiction, and, and he falls off, and he doesn't make music. And then he finally starts making music again in Colombia and comes back. He makes a comeback and, you know, uh, really just remarkable story. But ultimately, the, the point I'm making is Daddy Yankee went through the same thing. He report, he endorsed a Republican for president in 2008 against Barack Obama. Back then it was Senator John McCain. And he took all sorts of heat for that. All sorts of heat. People were saying he was a sellout. He didn't know where he came from, this, that, and the third, blah, blah, blah. And this is before Trump tossed any paper towels. And that was like the big talk of, you know, anybody uh, on the Internet and whatnot. And the whole thing, I think, is silly. And I have to say, I, I respect Nicky Jam and his music and all of that, but I don't like this move. Bad move. You don't go in and take a picture down because you're going to lose some money from a streaming song. And I'm sure it's probably a lot of money. But you had to know that somebody was going to try and cancel you if you wore a red MAGA hat, got on stage with Trump and said in English and in Spanish, we need Trump back. We need to make America great again. And that for the last four years, nothing has happened. And that's what he said. He said, we, we, four years have gone by and nothing has happened. Referring to the failed policies of the Biden administration, the Harris administration. And, and accurately so, right? He called it like he saw it. Now he just had to be prepared to take the beating he was going to take, and he had to expect that, just like Anwell, uh, uh, right? He also did it, uh, Justin Quiles. I'm sure they also received their fair amount of hate, just like I do. I mean, there's a lot of people who, who get hate for uh, uh, supporting Trump. It's kind of how it works, right? They hate Trump, they hate you. That's how it goes. So I would say I'm very disappointed uh, that Nicky Jam took that picture down, and I hope he, he's not uh, taking back his endorsement. It, it would be a it really would be a detriment for him, I think, in the long run. And had he stuck to it, he would have found the MAGA movement to be so generous and supportive and saying, you know, I never heard of you, never heard of your music, but we're going to support you just because the left is coming after you to cancel you because of Trump. And, and, that's, and we've seen that happen time and again. Right. A lot of generous people, a lot of big hearts in the MAGA movement. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that up and maybe we'll get into that and we'll get some uh, reactions to that in the days to come. But we're going to get to your calls and more. 833-4-VALDEZ, 833-482-5337. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. Call now, 833-4-VALDEZ. That's 833-482-5337. 833-4-VALDEZ. That's Valdez with an S. Thanks for what you do. You, you have 
so many people, you ask the questions that if a viewer had a microphone, they would ask that question, and you seem to always ask it right at the right time. So God bless you, my friend. America at Night with Rich Valdez. Her policies have caused every single problem we've seen in this country over the last three and a half years exploding. Exploding inflation, that's on Kamala Harris. Groceries you can't afford, that's on Kamala Harris. Housing that is unaffordable for young American families, that is on Kamala Harris. And a wide open border, that's on Kamala Harris too. So let's say to Kamala Harris, you're fired. We're not sending you to the White House. Get out of Washington, D.C. and go back to San Francisco because she is a San Francisco liberal at heart. And that's clearly where she ought to be. That is uh, Senator J.D. Vance, the Republican uh, vice presidential candidate at a campaign event in Michigan earlier. And he says Kamala Harris's policies have caused every single problem we're facing and she needs to be fired. Uh, I agree with that. I think that's the right uh, stance on that one. Let's get your uh, opinions on everything that's going on. Let's uh, go to Monica Pendleton, Oregon, K-U-M-A. Monica, welcome. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm really, I'm really bummed about Tito Jackson because I, I actually had the pleasure of interacting with him. How cool! I, yeah, I was fortunate. Um, the Jacksons uh, came to Lincoln City back in March of 2016, Lincoln City, Oregon, by the coast there, and I got, I got to be front row, um, off to stage left. Um, I was on my right side, and so I was kind of off to the side, but that was okay. It's it's a great show they put on. And then later, I got got a a personally autographed poster, which I'm hanging with my ticket on my wall, and I got to meet and interact with all of them. I got a couple really nice pictures and um, got hugs and everything, and I I think I can't remember, but yeah, Tito was like the only one who was kind of hanging back, being shy. So then the brothers are like, "Go on, Tito, go get a hug." And so he comes over and gives me a hug, and he's just a really gentle, shy guy, a lovable teddy bear. And he asked me what my name was and where I was from. I lived in Rockaway Beach, Oregon, at the time, so. It was really no problem to go to Lincoln City and back. Sure. But, yeah, it was it was a really, really nice special interaction there with them. I hear and you. And, by the way, mm-hmm, yeah, Jermaine ahead. Jackson, he's a great chiropractor. Bear hug and pop your back in. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, thank you, Monica. I appreciate that. I've, I've never met any of the Jacksons. Uh, when I was uh, a teenager, I had such a big crush on Janet Jackson. I thought she was smoking hot. But... Um, I never got a chance to meet her. And, uh, yeah, I guess now she's out of my league because she's a lot older than me. Anyway, Monica, thank you for the call. I appreciate it. Kendall uh, Pendleton, Oregon, K-U-M-A. Thank you. And uh, let's continue. We move along with our calls tonight. Uh, let's see. Frank Evergreen, Montana, K-O-F-I. Welcome back from Ireland, Frank. Hi. Yeah, it was a great trip. Uh you know, I noticed over there that they're going through the same kind of struggle we're going through. They're going to outlaw vaping. They're also going to get rid of recreational marijuana. Uh, kids are not allowed to have uh, cell phones in, in classrooms anymore. And it's, it's, things are shaping up but all over the world. But uh, anyway, one other thing yeah. I want to mention is this, this second shooting here, I think Kamala... Uh, could could say more in the next debate. She should open it up with an apology for s- saying we have to put the crosshairs on Donald. That mm. that was it. Yeah, just, it's it's uh, like got, almost actually calling shot. for this type of violence. I know it, and I'm, but they'll make the focus. It's the gun. No, it's no. It's 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 a registered Democrat with a gun uh, that should be outlawed, and you know they should. Do a volunteer, uh, turn them in, and just uh, and then go go for their properties and possessions if they want to have this attitude. You know, we don't need them. They're the violence in this country, 
I agree. Anybody who's calling for that. Listen, I, I think I might be one of the first to criticize Trump if he um, if he said something like that. We got to take, uh, you know, we've got to put a bullet in somebody's head like the guy said about Trump or, you know, put put the I mean, I, rhetoric is one thing. Right. And, and I get it when you say uh, we got to we got to stop these people. OK, I get it. You know, fight, fight, fight. I get that. But when you get that specific, especially if you're going to continue it after they they try to uh, assassinate the guy and now two assassinations later. And they're still at it, saying, you know, it's Trump's fault if he, he needs to campaign differently. If he didn't bring about all this hate, maybe this wouldn't happen to him. I mean, you've got to be kidding me. They are literally normalizing, Frank, normalizing the attempts and threats on Donald Trump's life. And you know, some of that we had on the show recently, uh, Frank, Batya Ungar Sargon. She's a, a journalist from Newsweek. Uh, she she was on um on Fox News, and she had something really, really good to say. I want you to listen to this clip from Batya Unger Sargon. Check this out. Every accusation from Democratic elites is a confession. They are totally incapable of realizing what they are doing. They are constantly projecting their own sins onto Republicans. And here's what's really, really, really offensive. The first assassination attempt trace, they at least took a moment mm -hmm. to pretend that they minded that Donald Trump was almost assassinated. This time round, they have jumped straight to blaming him, yeah. blaming the victim. They are normalizing trying to murder Donald Trump. And the reason for that trace is because in the Democratic elite culture, victimhood is currency. So they can never admit when their enemy is a victim. They must always portray him as a Hitler-like perpetrator because yep. then they can excuse Again. violence yep. against him. Every accusation is a confession. And Every accusation is a, con uh, a confession, and they are normalizing the murder of Donald Trump. Frank, I, I think that this couldn't be further from the truth. What do you think? Yeah, that was right on. Uh, she really put it right out there. Yeah. Okay. I, I agree. Well, we'll see how what happens here. Tonight's a full moon, but uh, I think it's going to be It's a bad one for her, uh, karma-wise. Uh, yeah, well, we'll see what happens. I appreciate it, Frank. I'm going to get to a, a break right here, but I, uh, thank you for your call from KOFI in Evergreen, Montana. And the rest of your calls and more are coming up right now. I do appreciate that. Let me see. I got Arizona on the line over here, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Arkansas, Idaho, and Michigan. All coming up uh, straight ahead, 833-4825-337. 8334 Valdez. It's America at night with me, Rich Valdez. Don't go anywhere. We're coming right back. Radio six years in a row. It's Rich Valdez. Call now 833 4 Valdez. That's 833 482 5337. 833 4 Valdez. That's Valdez with an S. It's been only two days since somebody allegedly tried to kill Donald Trump again. And you're here at the podium in the White House briefing room calling him a threat. How many more assassination attempts on Donald Trump until the president and the vice president and you pick a different word to describe Trump other than threat? Peter, if anything from this administration, uh, I actually uh, completely disagree with the premise of your question, the question that you're asking. Uh, it is also incredibly dangerous in the way that you're asking it uh, because American people are watching. And to say that, to say that from an administration who has consistently condemned political violence, 
from an administration where the president called the former president and was thankful, grateful that he was okay, from an administration who has called out January 6th, called out the attack of Paul Pelosi, called out and said we need to lower the temperature after the Butler incident, and now for you to make that kind of comment in your question, because it, your question involved a comment and a statement. And, uh, you know, it is, uh, it, that is also incredibly dangerous. When we have been very clear in, in condemning political violence. It's incredibly dangerous to ask a question. That's what she said. And that is incredibly dangerous. Not the fact that you've got these people that are calling for, uh, Count Delacula, try and cue up that clip that we played last night of the Democrats all lining up and the celebrities lining up to say bad things about Trump. I mean, it's absolutely astounding to me that this stuff exists out there and somehow we turn a blind eye to all of it. Do we have that ready or no? All right, well, forget about that. Let's move on. Let's go back to the phone calls and um, hear what you guys have to say about this. Let's go to Watertown, New York, to Trixie, who's streaming the show, richvaldez.com. Trixie, go right ahead. Hi, Rich. Good to talk to you. Likewise. I listen to you often. Um, Thank so you. I'm calling in just to um, give my opinions about the assassination attempt on Trump. Um, people saying that the, the Republicans, you know, Democrats saying the Republicans are inciting riot, violence, hatred, such and such. Well, in their their reactions to the assassin att- uh, uh, nation attempt and just their general overall standing, I feel like they're the ones that are inciting it when they, you know, they're basically, in my opinion, encouraging these assassination attempts. And for people to be out there thinking that it's okay to wish death on a person because you don't agree with their policies or opinions, whatever it is, you're wishing death on somebody, shame, 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 shame on you. And shame on American people that think that that's okay to wish death on somebody. What happened to the morals of our country? What happened to people? How did we become so bad? I just yeah. don't, I just don't see it. No, I think you're 100 percent right, Trixie. And, you know, that clip that I was looking for, I think we found it. And, and it's exactly what you're talking about here. That They're not taking this seriously. And when the proof is out there, I want you to listen to this. We'll go and take Trump out tonight. Take him out now. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump. I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Absolute insanity, right? Absolute insanity. We got to put a bullet in Donald Trump. We want to blow up the White House. This is what they're saying. And Karine Jean-Pierre, um, when was the last time you heard Joe Biden say, this is unacceptable that uh, that these people are saying this? You know, when did you hear uh, Kemal Aires condemn? Well, all they've said is they condemn political violence. In this, and it was a platitude at that. You never heard them call out anybody by name saying, hey, listen, Madonna, next time you're out there stumping for me or for Democrats at a Democrat cause, we don't want to hear that. Because uh, I can tell you that uh, I think, I think, listen, I've seen Republicans boo Obama in front of McCain and McCain said, no, 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 don't do that. Right. I've seen Republicans step up to um, to do the right thing. I haven't seen that be the case on the other side. Anyway, Trixie in Watertown, New York, any final thought? Oh, Rich, you know, I just, I hope one day that people can, you know, like I said, vote, vote different. Don't vote for him. Don't wish death on him. You know what I mean? Just don't right. vote for the guy. How hard is it? Yeah. Stop normalizing the murder of Donald Trump. Trixie in Watertown, New York, streaming the show, richvaldez.com. Thank you for your call. I appreciate it. And let me see, do we have, yep, we can go. We can continue going. Let us uh, take this to Ken, Lansing, Michigan, WILS. Ken, go right ahead. Hey, Rich, I got to apologize to your screen caller because Donald, uh, I'm changing my subject. Donald Trump was in Michigan today. Yep. And uh, when that man ran to be president of this country, 
He had no. He said he was going to drain the swamp. That's what he told us, and he had no idea. None of us had any idea how deep that swamp was with Donald Trump until he got into office and exposed the dirty, dirty, deep swamp. And in saying that, he was talking in front tonight that we left two hundred or seven hundred and seventy thousand rifles in Afghanistan. Hmm. We left seven thousand pickup trucks, but Rich, I don't think we ever had more than thirty or forty thousand troops at any one given time. So Dwight Eisenhower uh, blatantly uh, reminded us back in the fifties: beware of the military-industrial complex. And when you want to know how deep the swamp is, ladies and gentlemen, Dick, don't go dove hunting with me. Cheney endorsed mm -hmm. Kamala Harris. Yeah, that, that isn't that something. Uh, but Dick Cheney comes out and, and endorses Kamala Harris. I think uh, it, it, it tells you a lot. It tells you a lot about a lot, right? The fact that, you know, I, I know that there's some bad blood between the Bushies and, and the Trumps, uh, but it shouldn't be that deep. It shouldn't be that bad. And Eisenhower was right. And I think Trump was brilliant in his handling of the military industrial complex uh, during his administration, 700, I think it was $750 million, billion dollars, I forget right now. But he he um, he put his money where his mouth was, right? Or our money where his mouth was. He made sure that he rebuilt the military, that uh, people were critical of Barack Obama for sending troops out there with uh, Humvees that didn't have uh, the right ballistic armor on it, where it didn't have the right flak jackets or, or, or body armor for themselves. He made sure that everything was updated because Obama and many Democrats, their goal in life is always to defund the military, to reduce the size of the military budget. And in some cases, it's warranted. Maybe we don't need drones that cost, you know, as much as they do. Maybe we can get drones cheaper. I think that there's there's some merit to that. Uh, we had a conversation on this program with uh, former Secretary of Defense Chris Miller, who said that he felt that the Department of Defense spent entirely way too much money for, uh, on, on some of the weapons and arms that we're buying and that we should pay less for them and maybe buy, you know, a different way. And I, I can agree with that. I, I, as long as you don't weaken the military, um, you know, I, like Obama's plan, right, we're going to spend less to weaken the military. It wasn't let's spend less because we're trying to be more efficient in our spending. And there's a difference because I think when you start cutting back on quality, You've got a problem, and and clearly that's what was going on. But uh, Ken, thank you for your call, brother. A shout out to you in Michigan on WILS. Thank you for your thoughts, and uh, we're gonna get to the rest of your calls and more straight ahead. Eight three three four eight two five three three seven eight three three four Valdez. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. Valdez. That's 833-482-5337. 833-4-VALDEZ. That's Valdez with an S. But I kind of liked it when she did this. Turn the page. You like that? Okay, so I need you to be with me and practice with me. What are we going to do? We're going to turn the page. Oh, pretty good. Do it again. We're going to turn the page. you because when I see Wisconsin and I'm watching National Land TV because it's a pretty important place and Minnesota will help you practice with this you just show me this turn the page right turn the page and you know what else that looks like bye bye <laughs> All right, that is Tammy Walls, the wife of Minnesota Governor Tim Walls, uh, vice presidential candidate uh, for the Democrats and running with Kay Malaeris. And what's interesting is, yes, she was shouting and she sounded a little unhinged, but that's, you know, campaign trail hype. The, the funny thing here, I think, is what are we turning the page on? Kamala Harris is in office right now. 
If we're turning the page, then we're turning it to Donald Trump. Silliest thing I've ever heard. You can't turn the page on Trump because Trump's not in office. Sangana pendeja. Not so smart type of lady here. Unbelievable. But this is where we're at. So I say, yes, I'm with you, Tammy Walls. Let's turn the page on the policies of Joe El Baboso Biden. Let's turn the page on the failed policies of Borders are que mala eres. Let's turn the page on your husband who's not even there yet. We're turning the page on him, too, since he's with them. Because what we need to do is turn the page away from the Democrats who've been in charge 12 of the last 16 years. Turn the page. 100% right. Let's get to your calls. Uh, where do I want to go? I want to go to Bowling Green, Kentucky, WKCT. Brad, go right ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I went to the uh, local store here to get some just a few supplies, and when I put my stuff on the up on the counter, I said they shot at Trump again. And this woman, this old woman, said, "Did they get him?" Kind of like excited. Yeah, and I yeah. just glared at her. I said, well, "You ought to be beat for that." And Is that and then we. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, boy, I was mad as hell. And, and uh, you know, I, I, we went on a little bit with the conversation, and I said, boy, this is a hard times we're in right now. I said, I think we ought to elect another Democrat. She said, I think so, too. And I just rolled my eyeballs and <laughs> walked out of the store. And, and but, but the way she said it, did they get him? Just, yeah, re- really wow. interested, really uh, ready to go, right? Uh, it, it's really sad to see that this is where we are. But this is where we are, brother. We are there. People are um, are being conditioned, trained, programmed to normalize the death of it. This is exactly, uh, from what I've read in the history books, exactly how they did it in Nazi Germany. Right? They created a, a party, the um, Nationalist Socialist Party, right? The Nazi Party, that made it uh, okay to ethnically cleanse uh, Germany. They said, no, we got to get rid of these people. These people are bad. That's what they're doing here. These people are bad. You, me, Trump, everybody else that's part of the, 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 the MAGA crew, MAGA extremists, extremist Republicans. This is a very dangerous thing, and we're literally seeing it happen, right? They've watered the seed uh, of, of, of hate and division, and now somebody's trying to kill Trump. Now, they say Trump is the one spewing hate. How come nobody's trying to kill Kamala Harris? How come nobody's trying to kill Joe Biden? I'm not asking for them to kill Joe Biden. I'm not asking for them to kill Kamala Harris. But my question is, if Trump were so effective at spewing hate and division, why isn't it happening? Because he's not doing that. And I know you know that, and I'm preaching to the choir here, but this is out of control. The gaslighting is like something I've never seen. This is next level g- gaslighting. Uh, this is uh, like a master class in gaslighting. Unbelievable. Thank you, Brad, for the call. Shout out to everybody in Kentucky on WKCT. And let me see, where do I go from here? <clears throat> there was another one I wanted to get to. Uh, John, Horseshoe Bend, Arkansas. K-S-A-R. John, go right ahead. You're on with Rich Valdez. Hey, hey Mr. Valdez. How are you doing? I think, Wonderful. I thank think you. This per- you. Remember uh, how Ireland was being taken over by the British and the IRA was fighting and all that. I think that's sort of like what we're paralleling to. And um, the problems we're going to be in if Kamala Harris gets in, which I don't think she will. But I talked to people and they said, uh, I said, are you, are you a Republican? And they'll say, yeah, yeah, I'm a Republican. Well, are you going to vote? Well, no, because it won't make a difference. A lot of people are thinking that Kamala's going to win, so they sort of give up on it. Have you ever heard that? Sure. That, I mean, that, that's, that's not unique to this election. That's every single election I've ever been alive for. That's been the case. Uh, a third, it's always, in my opinion, some, some number close to a third always feels that way. There's always the part that are like, look, I don't care who the Republican is, I'm voting Republican. I don't care who the Democrat is, I'm voting Democrat. And then you have a third of the voting population, not a third of the people, but a third of the voting population that will say, look, it doesn't matter who gets in, my vote doesn't count. You know, try to find a, you know, I've met plenty of conservative Republican in New Jersey uh, where, you know, good luck ever getting a conservative Republican elected. So, and because they know that, uh, you can get a, a Republican that's moderate, even moderate to conservative, like a Chris Christie type. But you, you're not going to get a, uh, um, you know, a a 
uh, Speaker Mike Johnson type ever elected in New Jersey. That won't happen, at least not at, for the foreseeable past or future. It, 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 there just isn't a population of people that support it. And, and, and most of these people would tell me, look, yeah, if I thought my vote would make a difference, I'd go and vote, but it doesn't. So what do I care? And, and that type of apathy is how you lose elections. People need to take this extraordinarily seriously and go out there and hit this like they've never hit it before. They've got to get all of their adult children that can vote to get out there and vote. They've got to get their neighbors out there to get and vote. Anybody they know that's a shut-in, that needs a ride to the polls. This is everybody's year to actually do something. It's This is the year for everybody who's been like, oh, I never thought about it. Uh, I always say I'm going to go vote, but I forget on election day. i got to go to work. and this. Uh, stop making excuses. If you care about America, go and vote. It's that, it's that simple. And it's not me saying it. It's going to be you saying it, right? You and everybody else that's on the line because we have to make a difference. If we don't go out and vote, we got nobody to blame but ourselves. John in Horseshoe Bend, uh, Arkansas, KSAR in the building. Thanks for the call. Coming right back. Speed round. Don't go anywhere. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. All right, America, welcome back. Rich Valdez, and this is it. It's the speed round. And I want to go to, uh, let's go to Dorian in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. KDKA, go right ahead quickly. Lightning show tonight. I, I, I'm curious. Do, do we have a head of the NSA who has a secret crypto algorithm? I don't know. <laughs> I, I was looking into that. I see that it's uh, General Timothy D. Haw or Huff. I don't know how to pronounce that. And I don't who, see his background in that. Who Go ahead. Who would be responsible for well, the, the president nominates these people, but they ultimately report to the Secretary of Defense and the uh, DNI, the Director of National Intelligence, respectively. So uh, based on what part of their job they're doing, whether it's the uh, U.S. Cyber Command job or the um, the uh, NSA chief job, uh, and they're kind of uh, interconnected. But, yeah, I don't know. We're going to do some research on that, and I'll get back to you on that one, Dorian. Sorry I don't have an answer for you, but I appreciate the call. Shout out to everybody in Pittsburgh, PA, KDKA. Let me see. Where do I go? I want to go to uh, Paul, Zanesville, Ohio. Speed round. Go for it, my brother. Hey, hi, Rich. Yeah, you know I work in a retail establishment at 60 years old because we need to pay the bills, the gas, groceries, sure. whatever. But anyway, um, I heard two ladies talking today. They looked like they was middle-aged or so. And I heard them say that maybe the third time, the third time will be a charm. You know, the third time is the charm. Paul, that is insane. But you know what? Again, it's normalizing the murder of Donald Trump. Absolutely horrible. I'm sorry to hear that. Shout out to everybody in Zanesville, Ohio on WHIZ. Also want to give a shout out to Pat in Sedona, Arizona, Joe in Salem, Arkansas, KSAR, KBFI, and everybody else listening. Take care. Good night. And God bless you, America. I'm Rich Valdez.